So today we are going to talk about how to create a login screen in Streamlit and do the authentication you using your own MySQL database. So this is how the application looks. The first screen shows the login screen. So let's put the username, password, and here you logged in into this, the main screen for the application. As you can see, there's now logout button is shown and then you can click a start processing and you enter a few things here about your model name version and then you click start processing and do whatever you want to do. Here is the code where we have just one thing, we import streamlet and then we are importing login from user. We will talk about this uh, file later, but as you can see, we just created a couple of sections. One is header where we are saying the streamlit application and then the main section and then the login. So we had these two sections defined in this page itself. So let's look at the header first. In the header, as you can see, we are putting the title and then we are using the session state to manage and show and hide these two different containers. And there are a lot of small nuances are there. If you'll not pay attention to that, you will spend a lot of time fine tuning and showing and hiding these different uh, regions of the screen, which we are calling them here containers. So as you know, Streamlit application, they, it executes everything from top to bottom. We are ignoring the other functions. We'll talk about them later, but this is what happens. It comes to stream, it comes to header section and then draws the title. And then I look log in variable in the session state. And if it's not there, I set it up to false and then say show login page. And this is the page show login page is doing this. So let's look at the login page now. As you can see, the login page has a section which is a container. Why this container is here? Because we want to show and hide. We will talk about it again uh, at the logout time and see how it is used. So in the login section, I am again checking if logged in in the session state is false, which will be false in the first scenario when the page is rendering first time. And then it will just show these two text boxes. And then you see I have this button, logged in button clicked. If it is clicked, then turn it true turn the session state true and that's about it. Because once it's turned true, again, the whole screen will be redrawn. And this time we will not go here because logged in is will be there in the session state. It will fall here and then it will show the logout page or the main page, right? This is what we did. Now let's look at what happens when we log in. So here admin, admin is my password and I'm trying to log in. I'm clicking this button. So you see, I click and nothing happened. It showed the main screen and went back. I don't know if you have noticed, so I will do it again. And this thing will create a lot of issue. So you see admin, admin, I typed, I'm clicking. It came and went back. So this is one issue I have to spend a lot of time to figure it out how to correct it. And the reason this is happening because of streamlit behavior, it's supposed to render everything from top to bottom. So first time when you click, this doesn't execute properly. It clicked, but then it render again and, and the whole thing go haywire. As you are seeing the two times I have to click. So the fix of this problem for this page to be drawn neatly is that in the ST button, don't take the response of it and then do anything, but use the on click Lambda. And this is your lucky day because I spent wasted a lot of time figuring this out. So what you do, you delete all that and remove all that and then you go here and you say 
on click lambda this you have to do on click lambda but let's do it correct way the way suggested in the streamlit documentation if you will read the documentation what happened is this lambda get the preference while getting the page drawn so this get executed first so logged in click and we are passing the username and password to this lambda and this is what it is doing so it's so it's same code which was written before but it was not getting the preference while the page was getting drawn so you have to change it to lambda and now as you can see i'm doing the same thing i go and check login pass the username password login basically returns true or false whether the user exists in database or not so in few minutes we'll talk about the login function as you can see now this code is this way and admin admin and then login you see this page came in one click because this lambda got the preference to be drawn so this lambda turns this state session state true and false accordingly and then the page get drawn and then it shows the right things so as you can see what happens is this logged in click basically check the username password if it's true it turns the session state true and false and then depending on that i show the logged out page and main page which is nothing but these sections so let's look at the main page which is very simple it just a you know few input screen and there's a button so this is called start processing and when you click it just shows some balloons in fact you can write here whatever you want to do on the page so that query will happen so now what happens when we click log out so as you can see the log out button has also a lambda called log out click why i'm going to lambda again and again because they got the preference so which does nothing but turns the session state into false that when you click log out and then it draws the whole page again and it falls to this if and then and then it shows the login page or main page accordingly so if i click log out it just goes back so this is in a very simple manner this is a login screen and what's happening for the sql my sql there's a one file called here user so it's very simple i get the MySQL connector, you have to get this pip install. Have a config parser. So here is your config file. It will look exactly like you will have a password and this database name, host name, etc. There are separate videos where we talk about how to deploy these applications to Azure and AWS. I think it's in part two and part three. You can take a look at that. But here, as you can see, there's a config file which has all this information. Now this host and all those things will change in production. Uh, that's why I was mentioning that. So just have this config file. And in user, as you can see, there's a one method called login. It takes username and password, and then execute the SQL query. SQL query returns, this is what it returns, admin, admin, and one. Basically, one means uh, true, or false. Obviously, I'm showing you here username, password, but it need not be like this. You can hash it, keep it in the database, and compare the hashed password. So you don't have to have clear text pass password. Because remember, all this thing is hosted somewhere in cloud. It has to be HTTPS, and otherwise also it's a bad, bad idea to keep username, password in plain text in database. So do hashing and encrypt all that. and here, as you can see, we are just creating a connection, then cursor, and then calling the query. This is how the query is made. Execute SQL query. My stored procedure names and arguments, and I'm passing these arguments three. It takes username, password, and there, there's an out parameter, which returns true or false. How does my SQL look? It's like this. Check user. As you can see, it's very, very simple. So this is a quick rundown of the code 
of how you can build a login screen and authenticate user using MySQL.